Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Now i got all the dates figured out. Happy Fourth of July to all you folks. I thought it was yesterday. No wonder I know what else was cooking out. But anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, we know somebody on the line right now that knows how to cook out. Uh, I've had the good fortune of... Uh, being a guest at his house several times, it's quite an experience, and we're not going to get into cooking at the Nut House, but it's always good to talk to Peanut Quan on Outdoors with Larry Ray about fishing. Good morning there, Peanut. Good morning, Larry. Oh, man, thanks for being with us. I know uh, busy times for you, and we were talking about uh, there's more people probably fishing now than ever because of uh, the situation that we're in. And I've been wondering, I've seen a few things. How has this affected your, your circuit, your fishing circuit? Have y'all been able to carry on during this time? Oh, it's been really hectic. Uh, we, we had scheduled a tournament down at Bay Springs, and we got a call from the Mobile District Corps of Engineers that says, hey, if you guys show up and you got more than 10 boats, we're writing you a citation. Uh, so that was a oh, week off, and we're scrambling, rescheduling, and so forth, but... Uh, yeah, it's putting the thing, you know, we, we go with the flow. We, we can adapt, and we change lakes to go to some different ones. But for social distancing, we, we told everybody we kind of, you know, we want to abide by the rules, too. Yes. So guys are checking in in advance, and then at, at, the, at the day of the tournament, put your boat in, get in your boat, and get away from everybody. Our weigh-in's been totally different. Um, guys are trailering. So we're telling them skip parking spaces between each other. Uh-huh. Don't bring your fish up here, but one one team member. We don't even need both team members. One at a time. Wow. Come up, keep your distance, put your fish in a basket, step back, let me weigh them. Uh, we're, we're wearing our mask, we hand sanitizer, and then we're, you know, I don't want it. I don't know about everybody else. No, but, no. You know, no. I don't want it either. So. And you don't want to but spread it, and, and, and you and particularly, exactly. uh, but you want, you want participation because uh, this is a great way to social distance fishing. Uh, oh, yeah. with your even if you're whoever it might be in your boat and i, I know you guys uh, like to fellowship and things along that line and that's the greatest effect is uh you know you can't you can't ought to cheer you can't crowd around and things along that line but i'd heard about the bay springs episode and so i didn't know if you'd had any other tournaments that you had to uh cancel but you've had you've had to switch some uh, switch some lakes i guess then Yes, uh, we, we've switched some lakes uh, because of that. I know uh, mostly Mississippi's been stricter than, than the other states. Tennessee has not been as bad. Uh-huh. We have dealt with some of that. But uh, like I said, we just changed the lakes, hoping that it dies down some, and we can do what we need to do. And you're catching uh, we're fish. We're halfway through, so we're, we're happy with that. Yeah, and you're catching fish. So, so tell, my, tell our listeners a bit about uh, how fishing has been. Uh, you 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 keep up with a lot of things, particularly on the bass fishing side. But I know you like to catch some crappie and bluegill or whatever it might be. So uh, talk about let's let's talk about the bass fishing first from the the tournament angle and things along that line. How's the fishing been? Uh, the fishing has been crazy this year. You know what do you mean by uh, that? You, What's what? It's it, guys are catching twenty plus pound sacks of fish. Come on, you know um, even now this time of year. You the water temperatures up and, and the, the fish start to slow down yeah. in that summer pattern. Yeah, we're still catching fish in less than five feet of water. Come now. on, come on. So, uh, so I fished Kentucky Lake last weekend in a in a Tennessee Bass Federation tournament. We had a I think it was a sixty three. Yeah, you 63 were three teams or something. Yeah, yeah. And um and you know day one was twenty pounds. Twenty uh, pounds for day for one. First place, and then it went to thirteen after that, and. Uh, I did. I was lucky day one. I had a limit of fish. I had, had just over ten pounds. I was in tenth place uh, day one, but caught one fish day two, which is usually my life story. I can catch them one day, <laughs> but not two days. Yeah, okay. And, uh, dropped me to like thirty something, but you know a lot of fish caught. And I know everybody talks about Kentucky Lake being bad with the flying carp and this and that, but yeah. I tell you, those little uh, we were seeing fry everywhere. I'm talking about the millions. Really? Okay. Everybody thought they were bait fish. Or whatever. They were flying carp babies. And I, but <laughs> I got a theory, Larry, and bear with me on this. Oh, here, hold on now. Y'all listen, Dave, Gene, listen. 
Peanut, Gene, listen, pe- I'm no expert. Peanut has a theory. Peanut has a theory. The truck driver driving down Interstate 55 this morning. <laughs> Here comes Peanut Quan's theory. Go. Theory. You know, I said God works in mysterious ways, and this is one of his mysterious ways. The river has been affected for years with the flying carp. Yeah. We've seen it from Tunica to Soto, McKellar. All the oxbows were, were what, four or five years ago. You would go down. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, we, we had tournaments where it was less than 10 pounds winning. Yeah. We've got boats, nobody catching any fish at all. Fish biologists that we've talked to saying, hey, you know, they're, they're killing the lake and this that. Well, I tell you, the fish have learned to eat, the bass have learned to eat those flying carp. So you're saying it's just a matter of time. Oh, wow. The Kentucky Lake realized that those little flyer carp are good to eat. Kentucky Lake's going to make a comeback, too, because our wow. tunica is putting 18, 20 pound sacks out. You know? All right, Dave Gabbard, you heard this as a, as a, as a, a wildlife yeah. man. You're, you're hearing that not only uh, the, can we utilize the Asian carp, or as he called it, the flying carp, but, the flying uh, carp. but, 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 but <laughs> I tell you, Larry, you know, I love to white bass fish. And, I know you I do. I take my dad, yeah. and we've cleaned some white bass, and I've seen those little two inch. Big head carp, baby carp, Asian carp, whatever. You and know. the white bass. They're, They've eaten them. And the them. white bass. Oh, all right. That's too, great. So well, they're so, learning. So they're it's, learning. Not, so it's yeah. not just uh, uh, your ancestors in China, no no pun here, uh, are exactly. eating this, but <laughs> you're saying the, uh, and someday we will have a redneck Asian TV show with Peanut Kwan. Oh. I, I, I hope so, Larry. It's I, on my bucket list. I'm hoping that one day bucket, it's my that bucket's getting smaller, Peanut. We got to get that show on the air, and I and I could be I could be your only skinny uh, Caucasian guy here. Okay, hey, we can get Gene and Dave on too. Oh, we'll let's do don't right. stretch it. Too, let's don't stretch it. Don't stretch it too much. But uh, Dave, you yeah. know that you live uh, Lexington near Kentucky Lake, and you uh, you hearing that up there, Dave, about uh, eating these Asian carp. Uh, no, not really. And I haven't talked to any of our, you know. I can't uh, wait to talk to. Uh, seen any of our fisheries guys. You know, you'll he, have to get Frank Fish on. I'll there. have to find out you from uh, the, the the new head man, uh, fishing, fishing guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, what's his name, Wilson. But uh, hey, we're talking to Peanut Quan, uh, Peanut Craft Lures. Uh, he got his own circuit and everything, and he just dropped the bombshell here with his own theory that uh, a lot of folks are <laughs> are thinking about right now. I wanted to ask you, Peanut. You you know you do a, a lot of things, and uh, I, I know that uh, more kids are fishing our state agency lakes and things along that line. Uh, where's your favorite place to fish? I mean, if you if you were going for bass, uh, and you weren't going to Kentucky or you, uh, Lake or Pickwick, uh, where do you like to go? Larry, a lot of folks don't know, but I'm from the Mississippi Delta. I'm from Clarksdale. That's how a Chinese guy gets a southern accent. You grow up in the Mississippi <laughs> Delta, it's going to come to you. And Tunica Moon Lake are my home lake. That's what I thought. Know. Yeah, yeah. The river's up and down. It, I'm telling you, Tunica's hard to beat. And I talked to some local guys down last week. My brother and I went down, and we caught a lot of white bass. Yeah. A couple of guys we talked to said that they're seeing more brim come around. So I'm glad really? to see that again. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I truly miss uh, North Lake, Lakeview, uh, and and uh, the old lakes, well, uh, Flower Lake, uh, and and all those, I, I I haven't been to those. And you know, I I know you can't get to Lake View North. I don't know if Flower Lake's still open. That's uh, how long I've been down there. But uh, Tunica Cutoff, uh, it's like uh, and and uh, and Dave and Gene will say this both. There's no place like Tunica. I mean, uh, far as uh, species of fish, and you know I. I've seen uh, people the boat right up on me when I was trying to catch a big bluebill, and all of a sudden I got twelve people around me. I don't know. I don't know who they are. You know. So. Well, well, hey, Larry, don't rule out Cold Creek now. Cold Creek. Cold Creek. So yeah, yeah, yes, sir. A, yes. Yes. Is another hidden gem because uh, I hadn't been in a couple of years, but a lot of my friends are from that lake, and they keep telling me you're missing out. Cold Creek, yes, but hear that, folks. Good, you won't hear. The crappie's good. The bass are good. And that lake is, is on. You got to want to get there. You know, you got to yes. want to get there. And then, of course, uh, the flood levels and things along that line has a an effect on it. But uh, you know, you can go to Bear Creek. You can go to any of these. Uh, 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 this is this is really time right now. I know I know peanuts in the in the lure making business and things along this line. But uh, 
Hey, you can catch you can catch some big bluegill right now. My wife caught some in a farm pond here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they're ripe too, aren't they, Peanut? Isn't this a great time to catch some bluegill? Oh yes, you know we live on a, on a community lake. Yes. And um, and my son Cody, he doesn't like the tournament fish because he don't have to. He don't like to get up at a certain time. <laughs> yeah. He has to be there at a certain time. He go. He gets up and goes when he wants to. But he loves the brim fish. Yes. So he talked me into going our lake. It was the last full moon we had. We oh three, yeah. Three brim beds, and we took that little beetle spin we make and had a fall. Well, that's what it is. Peanut Quad, thank you, buddy, for being with us. You heard you thank heard it you first. Happy fourth of you guys. All right, Dave, guys. Save me Dave some. Dave and Gene, y'all have a good one. Okay, buddy, thank you. All right, let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray, and we're out of here with Peanut, and we're going to Cha-Cha with Marty Marbury on Outdoors with Larry Ray. <laughs> 